For some of you, welcome again. Welcome for the second or third time to Wonderfest 2007, the Bay Area Festival of Science. I am Tucker Hyatt, the director of Wonderfest, and also a physics teacher at a school up in the North Bay called Branson. It's really heartwarming to see you all here this evening, celebrating science, celebrating scientists, and above all, learning. Thank you for being here. Wonder plus generosity and foresight conspire to make Wonderfest possible each year. There are so many individuals and institutions who deserve our gratitude. First and foremost, there's the Stanford Chemistry Department and its chair, Professor Richard Zare. Thank you, Dick. There's my own academic home in the Branson School. And of course, there are generous corporate supporters of Wonderfest, Affymetrics, which provides speaker honoraria, annual reviews, which underwrites the Carl Sagan Prize for science popularization, and the first ever online presentation of Wonderfest videos. There's BASIC, the Bay Area Science and Innovation Consortium, which sponsors the Wonder Cup Challenge High School Science Competition. There's Wind River Systems, which funds the first place prizes for the Wonder Cup Challenge that you'll see given tonight. And last but not least, there's a small group of dedicated individuals whose support of Wonderfest has personally inspired me and has brought Wonderfest back from the brink of oblivion several times. Wonderfest technical director is one of those people. Eric Yao is hiding out, perhaps in the back, making his picture cards. I hope maybe you'll, you'll give it a try. Eric is giving those away uh, as a memento of being here at Wonderfest. There are Wonderfest fans, Rowena and Mike Holliday. Thank you, Rowena and Mike. And Wonderfest wife, the lovely and understanding Darlene Hyatt. Please give these individuals and institutions a big round of applause. And now it is my great pleasure to introduce this evening's Master of Ceremonies. Richard Hart is a celebrated journalist who has been reporting on science and technology for 20 years. Well known as the co-host of the former NBC Evening Magazine, Richard has hosted a variety of programs on CBS Radio, the Discovery and USA TV networks, and the Sci-Fi Channel. He is the only person ever to win a DuPont Columbia Journalism Award for investigative reporting and an Emmy Award for comedy. Tonight, Richard, sorry, right now, in this, era, in this era, Richard is pioneering new techniques to acquire and deliver video. He is, for example, instrumental in getting Wonderfest video online. He is the first and only journalist providing high-definition news reports for broadcast. Richard holds a degree in physics. He has a pilot's license and a black belt in Taekwondo. So there, he likes to add in that list. He is also my long-lost brother. Please give a warm welcome to my, well, almost brother, Richard Hart. Keep your seats. Keep your seats. Um, the long-lost brother is, is true. We, we actually uh, we frequently think alike. We find we complete each other's sentences. Tucker gives me noogies, which is probably more information than you needed to know. Um, the reason I'm here is because, actually, I, I consider, I mean, it could be science or scientists, but I consider this a celebration of scientists, the people behind the science, and also teachers, people who explain it to others. And I know how difficult it is to explain many of the things that we're discussing today and at Wonderfest, because um, it's easy to oversimplify, and it's also easy to over-explain things. It's, it's, the science is easy. Conveying it to other people is the hard part once you, you think you understand it. Um, and, and one, oh, by the way, we are, uh, many of you know that we're doing this, uh, we're recording this for a broadcast online for, for, for webcasting day. And we're asking people uh, if, you, if it's okay to be on camera, uh, you don't have to do anything. But if you do not want to appear, and we're asking you to wear these. <laughs> so that you can see Just so we know who you are. So you can come see Tucker for those. Um, I, the best example um, of the difficulty in explaining in popular terms um, science and scientists, I think, is and it's a story I tell often about the first time 
I was at Lawrence Livermore National Lab, and we were introducing some people. I interviewed somebody in the material science department because they had come up with this fabulous new material called uh, aerogel. And at the end of the interview, I said, well, I'd like to get you and some of your team in the lab. We just need to get some pictures of you doing whatever it is you do in the lab. And he said, you want us to put on our lab coats? And I said, I do you normally wear your lab coats? And he said, well, normally we wear T-shirts and sweatshirts, but when CNN was here, they made us put on the lab coats. <laughs> and that's a problem. The popular media's perception is, is their portrayal, how they feel, the individual reporter feels about a biologist or a mathematician or an astronomer is too frequently the way the public gets fed that, that particular scientist. So I've always tried to do my part in changing that perception. And there are other stories I could go into, but I think the best one to show just what typical, what I like about typical scientists or the ones that I know and love, uh, they're more likely to be like the ones in the Larson cartoons than anywhere else. In fact, I have a cousin who just had triplets. She's baptized two of them, and she's keeping the third one as a control. So that's, now that's a real scientist to me. And so um, we have tonight, and, and, and that's why we have a prize called the Sagan Prize for the Popularization of Science, and uh, that's not an easy thing to do. Some people just do it really, really well. So this year, and, and to present that award today, we have somebody who really knows something about awards and also knows something about education. Um, Richard Zare is the, uh, I, I guess, uh, I want to use the word beloved, but um, he, <laughs> he is, uh, he's got... <laughs> He has won more prizes than you can shake a nano too bad. Um, he, uh, I'm just going to give you briefly. He received his, uh, um, he served at Harvard, he served at MIT, he served at Stanford, but he loves Stanford. He's been here for almost 100 years now. And he, uh, I'll just give you one award. This year, the American Chemical Society every year presents an award for education, and it's the George C. Pimentel Award in Chemical Education. And in New Orleans earlier this year, they awarded it to Richard Zare. Soon. soon. They, they will soon. Okay. You don't actually have it. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. To present the Carl Sagan Award, uh, please give a warm round of applause to Dick Zare. Thank you. What a pleasure to be here this evening. Uh, the Carl Sagan Prize for Science Popularization was established by a Wonderfest and supported by annual reviews to honor San Francisco Bay Area researchers who have contributed to the understanding of science um, by the public. This prize uh, has gone to Andy Fracknoy in 2002, Kevin Papadian in 2003, Alex Filipenko in 2004. He will speak tomorrow at Wonderfest in Berkeley. Um, to Jill Tarter in 2005 and Paul Berg in 2006. Tonight, it is my pleasure to award Wonderfest Carl Sagan Prize to Keith Devlin, who has been the math guy on National Public Radio since 1996. In those 11 years, he has broadcast more than 50 engaging shows. Dr. Keith Devlin uh, was the executive director of Stanford Center for, is, probably is the executive director of, of Stanford Center for the Study of Language and Information. Uh, he's also a consulting professor in the Department of Mathematics and a co-founder of the Stanford Media X Research Network and of the university's H-Star Institute. He's a World Economic Forum Fellow and a fellow of the American Association for the Advancement of Science. Uh, Keith's a Brit. You'll discover that right away. Keith earned his BSc degree in mathematics from King's College London in 1968 and a PhD in mathematics from the University of Bristol in 1971, three years later, right? Okay. He has written 26 books and over 75 published research articles. He was the winner of the 2001 Communication Award of the uh, Joint Policy Board for Mathematics, the 2003 Piano Prize, and the 2005 Pythagoras Prize. His most recent book is entitled The Numbers Behind Num NUMB3RS. Maybe he will explain that to us. It's Solving Crimes with Mathematics, co-authored with Caltech's uh, Gary Lorden. Keith frequently gives public talks, rather notably at Wonderfest in 2000, and recently at Ask a Scientist, San Francisco's uh, chic uh, science cafe. 
In fact, Keith's Stanford website presents something like an 18-page PDF document that you can download that lists all his lectures, radio, and television appearances. Perhaps best of all is that paleontologist Judd Case honored Keith by giving an extinct species of possum Devlin's name, Pildra Devlini. No longer playing possum with us. Keith, please come forward. <laughs> Let me congratulate you and present you with what I hope is a very nice trophy. Oh, look at that. Okay. And something to go with it. <laughs> yeah, I'll take both. <laughs> and and should we turn it? Video camera up there. there. Comes up there. Zoom in okay. on Let's, let's, in on let's do thing. that. Okay, bravo. <laughs> and let me call on you to make any remarks you wish. Okay, so... Yeah, always a danger putting a, a radio guy in front of a microphone because they can get carried away. Um, first of all, I should say I'm, I'm extremely honored by, by this award. Uh, first of all, because of the, the, the name of the, the award itself and the memory of the, of the individual who's memorized by this, this award. Um, secondly, by that illustrious group of people who've received the award before me. Um, and also because it's nice to be recognized for doing something. It's just kind of a nice thing to happen. Uh, people often ask me, why do I do this kind of thing? It's because it's all on the side. And you actually don't make a ton of money by science popularization. You know, a best-selling popular book in mathematics might make you $100,000 one year. And that's the end of it. So you don't become a millionaire doing these things. I do it because that's what made me a scientist. Uh, when I grew up in England, uh, neither of my parents had graduated from high school. Um, they... We're just ordinary people. I just grew up in an ordinary area. I had no exposure to science. Um, th there was no TV back in those days. It was an awful long time ago. If, there are people in the audience who can't believe that's the case, that there was once not a television, let alone an iPod Nano, but that's another story. There was no exposure to science. The only thing that turned me on to science was a small number of scientists who wrote popularized books, popularization books, and I read them. I read them avidly, and that's what turned me on to science because I just didn't, I wasn't growing up in an environment where there was exposure. And so I've always felt that you know, there's, a, there's, there's, there's kids like me out there that I'd like to reach. And so that's, in a sense, is what's driven me. The other part of why I do it is because it's just darn fun. Right. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, and I'll just pick on one thing that Richard